will for this month in loving memory of Mildred Goodrich. Together with our different intentions, we now begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <laughs>
God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be robbed in darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters. But do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh, for the flesh has its desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. taken up with fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him, because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I'll follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus said to him, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord.
I invite you, my dear brothers and sisters, to once again give a deeper reflection on the psalm that we have just sung. You are my inheritance, O Lord. The psalm that points to our ultimate goal as Christians struggling to inherit eternal life. And as we keep pondering that, we want to ponder it in the context of our day responses to our own Christian vocation. A challenge posed by today's three readings. The first reading described how Elisha was summoned by Elijah, the prophet, to succeed him, and how Elisha readily and generously responded to Elijah's call, yet it was a period when Ahab the king and Isabel were persecuting the Christians. It was a moment of suffering, and maybe if Elisha did not have a genuine call, there's no way he would have readily said yes. The gospel, Jesus challenges our call to true discipleship, insisting that those who follow him must abandon all the material and the psychological securities, resist wholeheartedly anything that may tempt them to take his position as the place their trust in him. This very gospel narrative is within the setting of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem. His goal was not triumph, but self-sacrifice in Jerusalem at the cost of his own total fidelity to the Father. The total faithfulness that influences his own perception or expectations over his potential disciples as he walks along the way and meets people who either take the initiative to request him to be his followers or he takes that initiative to invite them to be his disciples. In his response to all their initiatives, he clearly defines his own expectations to discipleship, which unfortunately all his potential candidates lacked and a reserved commitment to the mission. To one he says, Lord, I want to follow you, but let me go first and bury my father. This seems to be a, re a reasonable re request. The man wants to go and fulfill his duties as a son to bury his father. Perhaps the father was quite ill and needed his attention and the care in his own last days. To this man, Jesus says, let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Is Jesus suggesting that we must abandon our family obligations? Of course not. 
Neither is he insensitive to our own family obligations. All he wants us to know is that in our relationship with him, we cannot substitute it with our own family pressing obligations. He himself prays the Father's will over and above the family of Nazareth. He did so on his first visit to Jerusalem as a young boy, presumed to be lost in the temple and in today's gospel as an adult, he does it again in Jerusalem as a fulfillment of the mission to which his father sent him to accomplish. Another candidate says, I'll follow you. Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. Just as we had in the first reading, Elisha requested Elijah to go back to his home. And that means this young man was not out of context. And we would again affirm that this is a very fair request that he made. In most of our cultures, we know for sure that if a young man is to engage himself in any serious commitment, he will always go to seek a blessing from a blessing from his parents or from his from the elders. But Jesus once again and compromisingly says, "No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God." Again, reminding us that commitment to him should be over and above any other commitments that we make. The other two candidates seem excited but lack full commitment. The one who says, I will follow you wherever you go. The man seemed to be excited about the mission of Jesus, willing to go anywhere and do anything for Jesus. But Jesus seemed to discourage him by saying, Foxes have dens and birds of the air have the nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus speaks in this way to let us know that excitement alone does not make a disciple. The potential disciple must know the rea realities of what following Jesus means. That's why Jesus tells him that while wild animals have a place to stay, Jesus essentially is a homeless with nowhere to lay his head. We must know that committing ourselves to Jesus means also committing ourselves to a life of sacrifice and surrender. Remember, all this happens on his journey to Jerusalem, where Jesus is going to be arrested, where he's going to be crucified, and where he's going to be killed. The disciple needs to know, to know all this, and that's why Jesus places everything on the table for the disciple to make, an informed choice, reminding us likewise of our own unconditional love and sacrifice in our everyday life experiences in our call to discipleship. <coughs> Christians have lived out this radical message. 
of the gospel in various ways. In the early church, those who became Christians had to give up a lot. They had to give up ordinary jobs. They had to give up social status. And sometimes they had even to give up their own lives for the sake of Christ. In later days, this radical commitment was also lived out by those who embraced a call to religious life. Men and women who willingly deny themselves a natural right to raise a family and choose to focus entirely on Jesus Christ and his way by living a life of poverty, obedience and chastity. However, Jesus' challenging message in today's readings does not only focus on the nuns and the priests. It is a call for all of us Christians. For instance, in their own daily commitment, Catholic men and women ought to live to a life of this radical commitment to Christ, especially in their families rest, re, raising their own children. There's no doubt that you and me sometimes struggle with being totally committed to Jesus. We sometimes, like the disciple who remained on the level of excitement about faith and Christian teaching, Forgetting that Jesus demands of his own disciples more than mere excitement. We are sometimes are like the two disciples who hesitate to put their feet in water because of being pulled by other engagements. Could be because of our own family life commitments, could be because of the demands at our places of work. Jesus reminds us to seek first the kingdom of God and the rest will follow in line. We know for sure. That sometimes with the grace of God we find ourselves fully committed to Jesus. At other times, we only have that partial commitment because we accept only the easy parts of his message. And other times, not committed at all. St. Paul in the second reading reminds us that to follow Jesus is a free choice. And a disciple is not obliged by any law except by the law of love, serving one another through love, implying that my willingness to abide by Jesus' invitation to follow him will depend on my love for him influencing my own relationship with others. The challenge is, are we willing to truly and completely walk with Jesus? Allowing all other goods and values to fall aside and follow him? Can you complete the, sent the sentence, I will follow Jesus Christ on condition that I wonder what sort of condition you want to put. You can think of one. I will follow him completely, provided that, and if we can complete the, sentiment, the, the sentence with a condition, 
then like the potential disciples of today's gospel, we are giving Jesus a second place in our own lives. We are not taking him as a priority because those conditions end up taking an upper hand. May we like Elisha who followed Elijah after slaughtering the oxen and using the equipment to cook the meat, detach ourselves from whatever that obstructs us from being true followers of Christ.